He loves you too, too much. His excess love. No matter what you do, God said, I'll never stop loving you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let this song minister to your heart to know that you are loved. Hallelujah.
What a love! Too what a love! Much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. oh. He loves too you. much, oh, excess love, oh. Him dying wasn't a mistake, it was intentional. He loves you too much, oh, too yeah. Too much, oh, yeah, yeah, too yeah. much, oh, excess love, oh.
thank you, Father. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. You didn't throw me away. You cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. He hung his head and he said it is finished. Hallelujah. You thought I was to die for. Hey. But on the third day he came back for you. Hey. You thought I was to die for. Hey. Yeah. What a love. Hallelujah. What a love. What a love. What a love. Thank you, Jesus. King of glory. Hallelujah. King of glory, fill this place. Fill the homes who are watching this morning. We need your thank presence. You, Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. thank you, Father. We can't thank you enough. Hallelujah. We can't thank you enough. Hallelujah. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we? your prayer this morning. I just, just want to be with you. Come on, raise your hands. Yes, the world will bow, bow down and say you are God. His deity. Every man, every man will bow, bow down one and day every knee. So let's start right now. So let's start right now.
eyes. Stretch your hands. King of glory, fill this place. You want to receive. King of my peace, fill this place. King of my joy. Father. believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so he had you on his mind when he was on the cross hallelujah and that was a great love amen that kind of love that changes everything a love that bled a love that died a love that rose again for not just me but for you amen this love it was personal it was a self-given love amen a love that changes everything. So I just asked myself, I said, man, does he love me that much? And he says, yes, I do. Oh, how he loves you and me. He loves you and me. So put a smile on your face, amen. Nobody dragged you in the house of the Lord. You wanted to be here today, amen. For the Bible says, enter his courts with thanksgiving, amen. Where the entrance gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when you come in this house, you know that you're free today. I don't care what it is that you're going through. You leave your problems on the outside because Jesus already died on the cross for them. Amen. He overcame everything. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to today? Maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe it's somebody at home tuning in. But today is Resurrection Sunday. We don't want to just, because it's today, that we just take the time to say, okay, we're going to celebrate him 
only today, but every day he should be celebrated. Amen. Every day he should be honored. Amen. Because he's alive and well. He's alive and well. He already died on the cross. What a great love. Amen. So let's recognize and honor him today. We celebrate our Jesus Christ every day, but today is a special day that we honor him. But every day should be a day that we honor him. Hallelujah. Because it was the precious blood. I want somebody to know that it was his blood that he shed on the cross for you and for me that healed you. Amen. That saved you. That delivered you. That restored you. Come on. Hallelujah. He's not just a little. He's not just a little being. He's big. He's great. He's your big brother. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He chose to do it. He willingly did it. He, he, he could have said, Father, take me now, but he said, not your will, not my will, but your will be done. He had a purpose on the cross, and that purpose was for you and me. So when you wake up and you feel breath in your lungs, and you got eyes to open and feet to move and walk, you say, God, I thank you. Because it's because of you that I can live, move, and have my being. Put y'all hands together if y'all believe. Amen. Put your hands together. I'm going to have y'all just keep putting y'all hands together so y'all can help me honor him today. Hallelujah. Because we're in the house of the Lord where you're free. No more chains going to bound you. Y'all look good today. Y'all got the, the best smile on your face. But God said, I'm going to come preach a word to you. It ain't going to come from me. It's coming from the man of God. Amen. But while I'm up here, I want to encourage you and remind you that he loves each and every one of you and there's nothing that you can do about it I don't care what you did last night he said I still love I still love you why because love covers love covers a multitude of faults and sins amen amen so I'm sending you a virtual hug at home and I'm sending you one in the spirit in the airwaves I want y'all to know that Jesus loves you it's not just a cliche he loves you Amen. He loves you. I know I'm going to park right there for a minute because I want y'all to know we're just not going to say it to say it because it's today is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. But every day I'm going to tell you that Jesus loves you and tell somebody else that you love him. Amen. That Jesus loves them. And while I'm doing that, why don't you go ahead and greet one another while I'm on that vein. Amen. I know I may be out of order, but that's all right. God said I can shift it up if I want to greet each other in the name of the Lord. Let them know that Jesus loves loves them and that you love them as well and you're glad to see them but those of you that at home y'all can greet each other virtually amen if y'all see somebody in the chat say good morning my brother good morning my sister it's a good day to be alive and i'm glad to see you virtually and personally in the house of god amen amen because our god sits high and looks low and i thank him for sending his son jesus to the cross amen i love jesus hallelujah Oh, how I love him so. Amen, amen. He's a good God. He's a great God. Amen, amen. Like the song would say, reach out and touch somebody's hand. <laughs> Make this world a better place if you can. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, hug somebody. Amen, amen. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands together when you're, when you're done greeting each other so I know that you're done greeting. Amen. That'll be my cue. But y'all can greet. Amen, amen, amen. I said put your hands together when y'all done greeting. I had my head down and I ain't hear not a one clap. I'm going to need y'all to clap a little bit better than that. Amen. Not just for me, but our Heavenly Father and for Jesus. Amen. The one that we're celebrating today and every day. Can I get an amen in this house today? Can I get a better amen than that? I want, I want y'all to say amen. That's right. I'm going to have y'all stretch those vocal cords today. I don't know what y'all thought this day. I don't know what y'all thought today was. But we're going to celebrate our King and our risen Savior. Amen. So get those chops ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me for a moment. I'm trying to change something in here. This moving so slow. As soon as I figure it out, I'm going to press the button. But in the meantime, for those of you that are home, please make sure that you're liking and sharing and liking and sharing. For those of you in the house, take out your cell phone. This is all right. You're not in school. I'm not going to confiscate your phone. Go ahead and make sure you share. Share the message. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, of course, you can get the link and go ahead and share it as well. Let your family and friends know that we are on today and there's a word just for them. Amen. Can y'all do that for me? Can y'all do? Amen. Y'all can do that for me, right? 
I know I'm going to keep having y'all talk back to me today. Amen, amen. So make sure y'all sharing the word. Make sure y'all let somebody know who needs to hear from God. Let them know that Jesus loves them today and that there's a word for them. Make sure if you're not following us, go ahead and follow us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, sorry. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow, like, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. You know you know how to do it. You got Facebook and Instagram. I don't have to coach you on that. But you make sure you let somebody know. Make sure y'all stay connected to us. Can y'all do that? Because we don't know everybody. Y'all know folks that we don't know. So each one reach one like they used to say. Each one reach one. Right? So there's your assignment. Each one reach one. So go ahead on Facebook and share and say, hey, Prevail Christian Church is on. There's a word today if you want to hear, but I know it's going to benefit you. So go ahead and tune right on in. Amen, amen. Okay, so for those of you who are here for the very, very first time, I know we have those who I haven't seen in a long time, and sometimes it feels like a family reunion, but that's all right. It's good to see each and every one of you in the house today, your smiling faces. I got a chance to hug some of y'all. The rest I get to later. But for those of you who are here for the very, very, very first time, we want to acknowledge you as our VIP guest. So if that's you, raise your hand. Stand if you can. Amen. We're not going to embarrass you. Put a microphone in your hand and ask for your name. You're going to write it down on the card. Yes, put your hands together, family. Come on, put them together loud. Let them know that you're glad to see them in the house today. We're so excited. Amen. You may be seated. We're excited that you're here today. Why? Because Jesus loves you. And on top of that, he got a word for you. And he sent you here for a purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. And so at this time, the ushers are going to pass out an envelope. No, a brochure. And in that envelope is going to be a blue card. On that blue card, I want you to fill out your information and drop it back in the bucket during offering time. You got that? So blue card inside the brochure. Fill it out and drop it in the bucket during offering time. Amen. Okay, now when I say amen, y'all holler back at you, girl. Amen. Good class. That's right. That's right. Y'all look too good not to say amen. Everybody suited and booted. Huh? What's that, Mama Stell? What'd you say? What'd you say? That what? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, I thought I heard somebody say to put praise. I just want to make sure I caught it. Because I want to praise him too. I've been praising him all morning. I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to be alive. Amen. So excuse me if I'm all out of sorts, but I'm not. I'm just excited. I'm just happy. Amen. Because Jesus loves me and he loves you too. And I'm glad to see y'all in the house and online and on YouTube and on Facebook. Amen, amen, amen. So before I bring Pastor up, I just want to remind you because we're talking about saying and talking and believing in faith. And y'all know we're a faith-based church, amen. So I mentioned something on yesterday, not yesterday, last Sunday. And I want to repeat it again before I bring Pastor up because it goes in line with everything that we do and everything that we're taught, amen. So again, I touched base on yesterday about faith, amen, that faith is released by the words of your mouth and the confidence of your confession determines the status of your faith. So if you believe in something, the confidence will show. If you don't, you'll be like, yeah, I guess I'll get this job. I don't know. But if you say, I know I'm going to get this job, that's a confidence, amen. So the confidence that you have determines the status of your faith. So when you confess God's word, the word that we read, the word that we're taught, amen, here's a few things that's taking place. So when you confess God's word, you're releasing faith in the earth amen you're releasing faith in the earth simply put another thing that happens is satanic forces are stopped amen you know you can speak to satan and tell him to get thee behind you get up under your feet you can cast everything out amen so it's satanic forces are stopped another thing that takes place is that you release the creative force of God in the earth amen so if anything that you you need done of course you can't you may not be able to get it done but God knows he's he's creative they think they say he's mysterious but he's not his ways are just not our ways nor his thoughts our thoughts amen so again you release the creative force of God in the earth when you confess God's word amen another thing that happens is you transact business in the spirit realm transact means to carry to completion that means it's going to go all the way to completion so it transacts business in the spirit realm when you confess god's word another thing you give god something to confirm in your life amen so when you speak god's word and you confess it you saying hey god i'm giving you something well you're giving him something to confirm that you put a stamp and a seal on it that it is done just like when Jesus on the cross, he said, it is finished. So it don't matter what it is that you need when you put the word of God on it. It is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Another thing, you declare what you exactly believe in your heart. So when you confess, you declare what you believe in your heart. I don't know what your heart speaks, but when you declare, I want this job, I want this marriage, I want a healthy baby, I want a, a healthy relationship, I want a new house, whatever it is, you're declaring it, but you believe it in your heart. So when you say it, 
when you say it, when you say it and you believe it, you declare it. Amen. It lines up. Amen. Hallelujah. Almost done. Another thing, you place your order for what you desire in life. So you know how you go to the fast food, you go to Amazon, you put your order in, you got your pay, your wage, you got your confirmation. You know it's coming. You don't doubt about it. You may check on it to see where it's at or wait for your order, but you know it's coming because you put your order in. So when you release words in the atmosphere, you decree and declare, you're placing your order for what you desire in your life. And God says, I give you the desires of your heart if your ways please me. Amen. Hallelujah. And lastly, you lose ministering spirits, ministering spirits to go to work on your behalf. Amen. So they ready to go to work. All you got to do is open up your mouth and speak what thus says the Lord. Amen. So when you confess, you have to open up your mouth and talk boldly because you will have what you say. Simply put, you will have what you say. Can I get an amen if you truly believe that? Amen. Amen. Put your hands together better than that if you can. It's not my message. It's God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just a messenger. So with that being said, read this scripture with me because y'all know what it's all about. We say it all the time. So I want y'all to confess it, believe it, say it boldly, boldly from your soul. Amen. So count of three. One, two, three. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen, amen. So at Prevail Christian Church, at your residence, on your job, in your house, whatever it is that you believe in God for, amen. I want y'all to say this with me. Those who never heard it before, I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to have y'all say it with me. That this house is finished, filled, and free of debt. Now y'all say it with me. This house is finished, filled, and free of debt. That was good. We're going to say it one more like y'all really believe it and put some bass in your voice. Amen. This house is finished, filled, and free of debt. Put your hands together if you believe it. I don't see everybody's hands being put together. I'm looking. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to have pastor come. Amen. Pastor's going to come and give a word on offering. Put your hands together and let's honor him as he comes. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Well, happy Resurrection Sunday. But you know what? I, I don't believe people really understand what, what that means when you say that. But I'm going to share something with y'all in just a little bit because I, because I can tell by your overwhelming enthusiasm, amen, that you're not really understanding what we're celebrating today. It has nothing to do with Peter Cottontail. Amen. It has nothing to do with the chocolate Easter bunny. Amen has nothing to do with carrots, has nothing to do with those little nasty marshmallow chicks. None of that. Amen. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but I want to tell everybody online, hey, listen, it's Resurrection Sunday, and we're believing, metaphorically saying Jesus got up indeed in three days, but we're believing in three days. In other words, in a short time, you're going to see some things that have died off in your life, like your joy, like your peace like your finances, like your opportunity, like your relationship to be resurrected in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? He didn't just get up for me to go to heaven. He got up for me to come up while I'm still living here in this earth. Can somebody shout amen? Normally when people don't shout amen, which is because one, they may not understand what's going on, or they just don't, I don't believe Jesus did all that. I'm just here so I could just go to heaven. Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. But I'm okay. I'm gonna have my. I'm gonna enjoy myself while I'm here in the earth till it come. Cause I don't need no Bentley in heaven. Out of two people got that out of five hundred. I don't need that five bedroom in heaven. I got a mansion bigger than that. Can somebody say amen? All right. Listen. I want to talk to y'all about the offering on this morning. So we always want to make sure that you have crystal clear clarity as to why you do what you do. Now I'm gonna just take a few minutes to share with you. The word of God so that you can understand now I want you to see something um, hmm, hmm, I don't know if I should do that with y'all uh, huh, 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 huh. Uh, send tell Prince to bring me in my Bible out that briefcase please um, so you know God has an order an order is his way of doing things okay now when you come out of the world when I say out of the world I'm saying when you come out of the world system of the world way of doing things you come into the church 
but because you have already been pre-programmed. Now, some of us have been raised up in church, and that doesn't necessarily mean we were doing things the right way because there were some churches when I was growing up that did what's called take dues, D-U-E-S. Well, the Bible never said take dues, amen? The Bible said pay your tithe to give your offering, amen? That's what the Bible said. Now, I don't care who, the, who it was. I'm not knocking anybody. Maybe they just didn't know, but that's not scriptural. So you come into the church a lot of times, and you come in with these misconceptions, in order to have a misconception, you've got a, a, uh, a concept from somebody who did not get the original precept. Did I lose anybody? So if I want to make sure that I'm understanding, I got to get the precept because the concept may have been wrong and gave me a misconception. Got it? So I, I turn to the Bible and I see what it is that God says so that I can make sure that I'm doing what it is that I'm supposed to do as according to Scripture as God laid it out for me to do. So we uh, we see in the in, uh, uh, first and was it Second uh, Corinthians chapter nine. I love going to this scripture because I want people to understand it. Second Corinthians chapter nine, and we'll see if they can get that on the screen for you uh, momentarily. Amen, amen, amen. If you can uh, get Second Corinthians chapter nine, and I want them to take a look at this here, and we're gonna look at verse six, verse six, seven, eight. And now we're going to take a look at this now. It says here, but this I say, he who soweth how church? Now listen, listen. Everybody in this building, I know y'all online too. Y'all will see the scripture on your screen. Uh, I'm sure everybody in here knows how to read, right? Okay. So I won't hear y'all. We're going to read this together. Pay attention to punctuations. A period is like a stop sign. It comes like a yield sign, ready to read. But this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Do y'all see that? Next verse. As every man purpose in his heart, so let him give, not what? Grudgingly or out of compulsion, for God loveth the what? Cheerful giver. You see that? And God is able to do what, church? Make all grace abound towards you. You see it? That ye always have what? All sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, my media team, y'all have to make the adjustments on the lower thirds back there. You have to and put it on the, the pro presenter thing to make the adjustments. Just take it off the, off the screen till y'all correct it, please. Amen. So. Uh, we see here, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have and all sufficient. Here's the thing about this. God said, I'm going to allow you to determine the outcome of the offering. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. Now, I often like you to understand, I often say for you to understand, is that you cannot look at your neighbor and determine what you should give as it concerns your offering. Because your neighbor could have came in here with five grand in their pocket and chose to give give four hundred dollars of an offering. Well, you may only have twenty five dollars in your pocket and chose chose to give ten out of offering. So it's not about equal gifts; it's about equal sacrifices. Can y'all say that word with me? Equal. Woo! They are asleep this morning. Look at your neighbor and say equal sacrifices. Now, that's what it's about, equal sacrifices, and that's what you got to understand. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. That means you're determining the outcome. Put verse 8 back up there, please, on the screens here. Because God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So this tells me grace is what? Favor. Grace is favor. And uh, that favor is the, that grace is the favor. That favor is the willingness of others to use their influence, their power, and their ability to help you prosper, to help you succeed. That's what that grace is. That grace is favor. Now, notice it says, and God is able to make grace abound towards you. So that means if you give your offering, you have favor coming towards you where there'll be people willing to help you succeed, willing to help you prosper. That's what that comes from. So that shows me that favor comes before money so when i give i expect the favor of god on my life now you can't receive the favor unless somebody just come up and just bless you but sometimes you have to open up your mouth and ask to see where the favor's at can somebody say amen 
You have to ask sometimes, okay, you're believing you don't have the money for something, and you call one of your friends and say, hey, friend, can I, uh, I, I'm a little short on this bill. Can I get $50 from you? And your friend say, of course, they give you 50 Shout favor. Okay, you call somebody and uh, you got something due this week, but you don't get paid the next week, and you say, hey, friend, can I borrow $200 from you? And your friend say, yes, yeah, shout favor. But hey, some people just don't want. I'm gonna talk on this side over here. Shout favor. So, 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 what I'm saying to you is that you got to see the favor of God. That's favor. What people are willing to help you prosper, help you succeed. Okay, you in the grocery store line. Lady just bought five thousand dollars worth of groceries. Got her income tax check. All you wanted was some eggs and milk, eggs, milk, and and some bread. And you look at her car. She beat you in the line on purpose. But then she looked back at you and say, "Oh, baby, you can go ahead." And she let you go. Can somebody shout favor? Are y'all seeing this? So that's the favor of God. I get favor coming towards me when I am a what? Giver. Now go to Luke 6 and 38. I want y'all to see this in the, in the gospel of Luke 6 and 38. Y'all said that. Come on. Read it with me again, church. Ready to read? Give, and it shall be given unto you. How? Good man. Hold on. You know what? I, I just felt. Some of y'all, look at your neighbor. Would y'all help me preach to your neighbor? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Well, they still scared. Look, look at the person that just said neighbor to you because they scared too. Say, neighbor, it's okay to say something. You're safe in here. It's okay. Let's try it again. Say, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, Therewith, it shall be measured to you again. Now, what that is saying is this here. Your capacity to receive is based on your capacity of giving. Uh, is that making sense to you? Okay. If I were to take this glass, and, I, and in my other hand, I have the cap that goes on the top of a water bottle. And I pour all this water out. And in the cap, I pour it, a little bit of water that was in it. Which one of them do you think can receive more water back into it? Oh my goodness, this is not Japanese arithmetic. If I, the glass, if I pour out this big old glass of water and I have a cap full of water and I pour out the cap and I pour out this, which one can receive more back? The glass can. Thank you, class. The glass can. Now, so what happens is this here. It show you about the, the sowing sparingly and the reaping sparingly, the, the sowing bountifully. The capacity to receive is based on your capacity to sow. It's not your dollar amount. It's equal sacrifices. So it's not that God doesn't have any more to pour back into you. It's your capacity to receive when he's pouring out. Are y'all seeing this? Because if your best that you gave was that $5, you got this. If you y'all you, see the difference, what I'm saying? So it's the it's the equal sacrifices, not the equal gifts of how God bless you. Now remember, it is I give. Give me one more scripture up there, please. John 14, 15. John 14, 15. I want y'all to see this. The reason I do what I do is because I love God. The reason I do what I do as it concerns being obedient to God is because I love Him. Now I ask the question. <coughs> I say, Church, how many of you love God? Matter of fact, let me ask y'all this morning. How many of y'all love God? If you love the Lord, raise your hand all over this building right now. If you love the Lord, raise your hand all over. That's good. That's very beautiful. Now, I'm going to show y'all something. So here's the asset test of your love right here. This is how God knows if you love him. So he says this in the Bible, John 14, 15. You read it. It says what? If you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. Now, ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you love the Lord? Because if you love him, you're going to obey him. You're going to do what he asks you to do. And part of God's order is for you to be a cheerful, hilarious, prompt to do it giver. One that pays tithe, one that gives offering. That's what God has said in his word for us to do. Can somebody say amen? Well, listen, we're going to get ready to receive those tithes and offerings. So if you need a tithe and or offering envelope, raise your hand in the air. And uh, our usher will assist you at this time. Amen, amen, amen. He will assist you and get those offering envelopes to you. If you're watching by way online and you're giving by digital means, that information will be on your screen momentarily. That information will be on your screen so that you'll know the various ways that you are able to give in the offering. 
Amen, amen, amen. For you that are in the building, the information will be on the screen for you for the various areas of giving that you have to give uh, through Cash App, GiveLify, and the other various areas that we have for you. Amen, 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 amen. Right behind you, bro, right behind you. Amen. Amen. First lady's getting ready to come now so she can receive this offering from you all. Amen, amen, amen. give it digitally the information is before you on the various ways of giving with givelify and cash shop i ask that you please put in the memo section the giving breakdown amen so tithe offering be given to pastor amen make sure you give to his personal cash shop which is there as well amen for those who give in by cash check of course you have an envelope for that um, but again, if you receive the envelope and you wish to give digitally, you don't need to fill out an envelope. Just so you know, just want to put that out there. But nevertheless, the information is before you. And for those who are sowing into uh, Pastor Marshall's life, we thank you for your commitment to honoring him by obeying the order of God and sowing financially into his life. Amen, amen. So we want to continue to give unto pastor in regards to first timothy 5 17 that says that the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine okay <laughs> thank you pastor okay so again we want to continue to recognize and express our significance by honoring Pastor Marshall because we love him, amen. So we respect him and we celebrate him. So again, just want to thank you for your commitment and obedience in advance, amen. So when you're ready to give, please stand to your feet. We'll say our giving confession. And then we will receive, amen. Hold your envelope in the air, hold your phone, hold your hand, your hand whatever it is to symbolize that you're giving today, amen. And repeat after me, say, Father, I thank you because I am a giver. Men give unto me a good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I'm sowing my seed in faith because I believe that you are raising up somebody, somewhere, to use their power, their ability, and influence to help me. Thank you, Father, for more than enough for me and my family and more than enough for this ministry. In Jesus' name. Let us all say amen, amen. Hallelujah, ushers, you may now receive and put your hands together if you're excited, amen. Because Jesus loves you. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Amen, amen. And because we love him so, we're going to give back unto him. It's a symbolism of giving back to him. This is just one way, amen, one way that we can honor him. We can't thank him enough, amen, for all that he's done for us and to us and through us, amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Well, at this time, oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I was glad again when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So I want y'all to put a smile on your face because this is a new day filled with grace and mercy amen and god's love for you and me i'm gonna keep telling y'all that because this is a new day and jesus loves you he died and rose for you and me so i'm glad for that amen hallelujah well how many of y'all are excited for the word that's about to come forth put your hands together amen put a smile on your face because god wants to speak to you today he has a word for you and I'm excited, amen, because it's going to change your life, amen. Life-changing experience is on its way. Loading now. So make sure you continue to share. Make sure you continue to share. 
like and share. Amen. Let somebody know we're on and there's a great word coming forth. Thank you, bro. Y'all put your hands together for my big bro. For LeBron. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now keep that going as the man of God comes. Let him hear you. Let's honor him today. Amen. As he comes to give us a word. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. That's what good love and do to you. They just don't know how to they just keep coming back for more. It's like candy, like, you know. Amen. I told her, I said, uh, this is a real original Snickers body. It's got that real caramel in it. You got to be careful, you know what I mean? Every time she gets you, I just get you keep coming back. I'm like, listen, you got to get back up off me, you know what I'm saying? back up off me. Amen, amen. Can somebody shout Jesus? Oh my goodness, church. Can somebody shout Jesus? You shout it when you're in trouble. You shout it when you're scared. You shout it when somebody trying to come against you. You want to shout it then. How about shout it when you're not in trouble just because he deserves some praise. Can somebody shout Jesus? Amen, amen. Listen to all my YouTube family and partners and my Facebook family and partners. Listen, do yourselves a favor. Do your neighbors and family and friends a favor and share this with them right now. Let them know that we are on. We have a great word for you today that I believe is going to be a tremendous blessing to you. Now, before we get into that word, I want to share this with you so you can understand something about this day because uh, he's not there anymore. Have you ever called somebody that went looking for somebody and they say, oh, he not there? Would you look at your neighbor and tell him he not there? Come on, look at somebody else and tell him he not there. Now, if you're watching online, would you put that in the comment? He's not there. He is not there. I need you to tell one more person to make it three. Say, he's not there. Now, I want you to see this so you can understand what I'm talking about. OK, because see, some people, some people like to still show Jesus on their chain on the cross. He's not there. Oh, my God, somebody. He's not there. Some people still want to go to the tomb and cry. Would you look at your neighbor and tell him he's not there? Are y'all understanding me? He's not there anymore. Now, why is that? Because he got up. He was resurrected by the power of God. And because he got up, would you look at somebody and tell him I'm getting up? I may look like I'm down right now, but I'm getting up. My money may be looking funny, but it's coming up. Y'all better hear me this morning. Now, you know what? I, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like phony people. What do you mean, Pastor? What that got to do with anything? Phony people is the people that you know go to the club with you and they be turned up. They be lit, they know how to party. If they ain't there, the party ain't even started. But then they get to the church house and act so quiet, so dignified, so bougie, like they can't even open up their mouth and say nothing. Would you look at your neighbor and say, stop praying with me and give God the praise he's supposed to get? Can somebody shout Jesus? All right, now, Mark chapter 16 and verse 6. I want y'all to see this real quick so you can verify what I'm saying. I want you to sit right here in Scripture in the Gospel of Mark chapter 16, and we're going to look at verse 6 and 7 in the NIV because I want y'all to, to see this. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16. I have it, but I want y'all to see it too, so... Mark chapter 16, there it is. You ready? It says, don't be alarmed. He said, what happened was, they came to the grave site where Jesus was buried, okay? Mary and Martha, they, they came there to the grave. You know, they got there to see Jesus, right? And when they came there, there was an angel sitting there on the stone. And they got there and the angel said, don't be alarmed, he not there. Like, who you looking for, he ain't there? Watch what it says. Don't be alarmed. He said, you are looking for who? Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. Let me let me tell you something. He has what church risen. He is not here. See the place where he was laid. 
He ain't there. Come on, tell somebody. See where he used to be? He ain't there no more. Soon, when you get this word, you're going to be able to tell people, remember where I used to be? I ain't there no more. Remember how I used to talk? I ain't there no more. Remember how I used to live? I don't live like that no more. Remember what I used to wear? I don't wear them threads no more. He got up. I'm coming up. All right, y'all, man, y'all ain't shy. I'm giving y'all, I'm preaching a whole lot better than what y'all let know. Verse 7, verse 7. It says, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he what? Told you. So he said, now, he said, I need y'all to spread the message because I'm going to validate what I've been telling y'all all along. So I want y'all to go tell Peter and the disciples what I had already told them when I was in Galilee. Let's validate that he said this. Did Jesus tell him in Galilee? Let's go to Mark chapter 14. 14 is before 16. Here we go. But here's Jesus talking. But after I have risen, I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead of you and meet y'all in Galilee. You see? So he was already telling them that he was gonna meet them well in Galilee. Jesus already said, is saying to us right now, I don't care what you're facing in life, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but I will deliver you from them all. You may be going through some tough challenges right now, but it's okay, I got up, you gonna get up. Moses went through tough times, but he came out walking, all y'all understand, walking on dry land. All you're getting is Peter stepped out the boat. That, Joshua walked around the walls of Jericho. I'm telling you the same God is the same God that raised Jesus from the dead is the same one that's gonna raise you out of whatever it is you may be going through that you don't wanna be in right now. Can somebody say amen? Amen, amen, that's a good place to put your hands together. Well, listen, I just want to show y'all a little bit of that. We're going to get into what I have for you today. I've been saying it all along this new series that we're going to start on today entitled Baggage Claim. I just need to know, are you ready for it? Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach to three people over here and two people over there. The rest of the 300, I don't know what to say. Amen. Now, you that are watching online, we're going to get ready to have our confession of faith. So if you got that great book called the B.I.B.L.E., the Bible, place that Bible in your right hand. We're going to have our confession of faith and then we're going to get right into the word of God. Come on, stand to your feet with me, please. And we're going to have our confession of faith. And let's say it with some conviction. Amen. Repeat after me. Say this is the word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer, and my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you believe it, shout amen as you take your seat. From Prevail Christian Church in Tampa, Florida, get ready for a life-changing, inspiring message. Let's join Pastor Will Marshall for a timely word. Amen, 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 amen. All right, so this bag, I'm ready to get into this thing. I've been waiting. This has been brewing. This is going to be a uh, 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 series over a few weeks that I believe is really going to uh, enlighten you, really going to take your mindset to the next marriage, your relationship to the next marriage, to the next level, and your marriage to the next level. But you got you to gotta get this. It's really going to be a tremendous blessing to you. And I'm so glad that y'all joined us online. I'm telling you, it's not coincidence. You didn't, didn't stumble across it. I'm telling you, it's for you to hear this. It's about to be a game changer for you. Everybody loves to have a game changer on their team. Everybody would love to have a Kobe Bryant and a Michael Jordan and a LeBron James on their team. Now, why would you want those type of people on your team? Other people were good, but these were game changers. They changed the game. They, they just had what it takes to get you to the finish line, to throw the last three-pointer during the buzzer. These were the people that you want on your team. This message is going to be a game changer for you. Now, in this series, I want to expose you to what's making the decisions in your life. Did you hear me? I want to expose you to what's making the decisions in your life. And it's probably not what you think it is. You probably think that you're the one making all the decisions uh, in your life. But I'm going to tell you that you're not the one that's making the decisions like the way you think. You think that's you, but let's see who's really making these decisions. So who's making the decision to behave the way that you are? Is it you? Who's making the decision to think the way that you do? Is it you? Who's making a decision to respond the way that you do? Is it you? 
What's making the decision to talk to your spouse the way you do? Is it you? What's making the decision for you to spend, spend or manage your money the way that you do? Is it you? Now, in this message, I want you to understand it's not just for relationships as it concerns marriage, but it's for any relationship that you may be in, even in your relationship with Christ. Because you could be in a relationship with Christ and still not be making the right decisions, although he's telling you what not to do, what to do, and you choosing to do what you want to do, just like you do in your relationship. When your spouse tells you something, you think your, your, the way you fry chicken is the only way chicken ought to be fried. You think that says a thousand ways to skin a cat and you think your way is the only way to skin a cat. So if a, a cat is not skint your way, you got a problem with it. So we got to see what's been making us have this type of this type of mentality. Where, where does this come from that we feel that we're in charge of something? And I'm going to show you that it's really not you the one making the decisions and running that part of your life like you think it is. We're going to discover what that is now. If you continue with me through this entire series, when you get to the end, you will discover what's been controlling your decision making and how to change it. But you got to be able to stick this thing out because I'm going to lay this down. I'm making this into a book. I got to lay this thing down. And I ain't going to let y'all rush me. And we're going to have a good time with this because it's going to really be a game changer in your life. Are y'all understanding me? So when I say baggage, it's a metaphor for the mind okay so when you hear me say baggage i'm metaphorically speaking about your mind i'm using the bag as an illustration to represent your mind behind me i have some luggage we have different sizes of luggage which have different mindsets that people carry some people have a very strong mindset and they make all these death defined decisions and can't nobody tell them that that way is the right way or the highway or you get out. Then you have some that have this way of thinking. Um, so listen, um, don't worry about it. We're going we to have you. We're going to pick up. Tilt it down, brother. We're we going to have you. We gonna, that, that, she got it. She got it. She, we we going we gonna to have you uh, 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 discover where you at. Don't worry. We're going to come your way. Look at your neighbor. Say, he's coming your way. He's, he's coming your way. Listen, listen. I'm going to be right there at the place where you bought your baggage from. I'm coming your way. Trust me when I say I'm coming your way. So when I say baggage, it's metaphorically for the what? Mine. Now, it says baggage claim. So when I say claim, it's your acceptance of what's been packed in your baggage. Your mind. Ooh, I got one amen. I got 500 folk in here. I got one amen. I'm going to say it again. Maybe I can get some more this time. When I say claim, it's your acceptance of what's been packed in your baggage, which is your mind. Amen. 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 Now, y'all ready to get into this baggage claim? I got one over here. Y'all ready to get into this baggage claim? Amen. So here's what I want you to do. Look here at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. I want us to read this and I want y'all to see this. <coughs> That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become what? One flesh. Let's read that again. This is why a man leaves his father and his mother and, and is united to his wife, united, united to his wife and they become what? One flesh. That is why a man leaves his father, not bring your father with you. This is why a man leaves his mother, not bring your mother with you. And as you nine it, unite it, wash my hands, unite it, and they become one flesh. Y'all got that? They become one flesh. Some of y'all look at that. Boy, you better preach up in here. I ain't even get started yet. Listen, 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 listen. They become, they become one flesh. Now. So let's talk about chapter one of this. Y'all ready to take this flight with me? Now, we ain't on the flight just yet. We ain't on the flight yet, we, but we got the baggage packed, right? But we, we ain't make it to the airport yet, but we got the baggage packed because when I met you, I came with my baggage packed. Oh, come, come on. Come. Oh, yeah. So, so, so ch shout chapter one. Shout chapter one. So chapter one is his and her baggage, his and her baggage. 
Now, when we say the word becoming one, look at it again. This is why a man leaves his mother and father and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. The becoming one, we're talking about his and her baggage. The becoming one is the process of learning each other. Okay, the becoming is, is, is that process of learning each other. Now, why is this important? That why is it a process? Because when y'all come together, you come with different backgrounds. You come with different life experiences. You come with different views. You come with different past from past, different past relationships. You come from different upbringings. You have different tastes. Amen. Oh, no, I don't I don't eat. I don't eat chit chitterlings. What? You don't eat no chitterlings. So when as soon as she said chitterlings, I know she didn't eat them. So when she said, uh, 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 Lord, I done got the wrong woman. <laughs> no, no. When you eat chit, you when you eat chitterlings, it's pronounced chitlins. I don't eat chitlins. Oh, oh my God. So you come with different tastes. You come with different traditions. Oh no. Uh, on Thanksgiving we normally go to theme parks. What? Ain't nobody cooking no ham. Ain't nobody cooking no greens, no cornbread, no fried chicken. Ain't nobody cooking no lima beans with a smoked neck bones in them. You see how quick I said that? Ain't nobody. They got to put. See, you know when somebody. Now, you come with different what? Traditions. Different styles. And, and, and you, you, the, the attraction was they was fine. But then later, later you got one like, oh, I mean, like, then you think you want to put on. Uh, I bought you this shirt I want you to wear. Do you mind putting that on? Because you, 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 their style is different. Are y'all seeing this? All right, all right. Different personalities. Different personalities. Why are you so quiet? I like you to talk to me when we having fun. That I man it went over your head. All right, well, you, 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 right, different personalities. You always loud. You always got something to say. You always got to have the last word. You got the last word syndrome. Anybody ever had that before? Anybody ever met somebody that had last word syndrome? Some of y'all say, I don't know what that means. Well, ask the one that said amen. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, Lord, let me move on. You come, in, you, come, you come into this becoming one with different income. Different income. You know, you, she the breadwinner. Right? She the breadwinner, you not. And you got a problem with that. Yeah, you, some men got a problem with the wife being the breadwinner. I ain't never had no problem with that. I ain't never had no problem with that. You know why? Because my identity was not based off of a role. My identity came in purpose. Because if, if I met a uh, senior chief surgeon of Tampa General, well, her income may have been way more than mine. But that didn't change the fact that I was the head of the house. That didn't change the fact that I'm still responsible for being a leader, the visionary, the teacher. You got my last name, so I'm responsible for you. You make more money, but that didn't change my place. <laughs> I'm talking, all right, let me move on, boy. Y'all, I'm giving y'all more. Y'all just looking at me. Anyway, so you come into this relationship, watch this, with different credit. Different credit. And the one ain't got the good credit, always want to buy stuff on credit. <laughs> let the church say yes. <laughs> All right. You come into this thing with what you said, different spending habits. No, we trying to save. We live in week to week and you just got to have that new flavor of lipstick that done came out. You got to have the latest designer stockings. You got to have your shoes match your purse. You just got to have it. Look at your neighbor and say you just got to have it. You come into this thing with different political views. Uh -uh, I, 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 I like Trump. You like who? Oh, man, I, Lord. P people got different political views. All right. You come in this thing with different skill sets. So all this in becoming one 
It's the process of learning each other because you come in with differences into the relationship. And this was just the name of few. So now, so when you are walking in one, become becoming one, when you become one, here's what happens. You think about your marriage as a team of two amazing, unique and talented individuals. Becoming one with your spouse means you get to play, work, and grow together as a couple. And to successfully do that requires changing your mindset so you see your marriage as a team of two. The team is what made it one, but it's two individuals of, on that team. And so that means you have a difference and I have a difference and I'm not trying to change you and you're not trying to change me. But we got to learn how to respect each other differences and how to make these differences work, because there are some differences that you have that you may need to adjust. Because your difference don't make your difference right. All right. Another thing that makes this team work becoming one is you have to learn how to make decisions together. Seek each other's opinion on anything that impacts your marriage and your spouse. I ain't got to ask my wife what color socks I need to put on. That's not impacting our marriage. Some of y'all may say, oh, my baby got, I don't know, because he ain't wearing no purple socks with that red off. No. <laughs> well, you got to know your spouse now, because, you know, you, that's the day you might need to help him in that department. But as far as me and my house. Right. So that's making this another thing. Another thing about this becoming one is you learn how to resolve your marriage problems together. You learn how to resolve your marriage problems together. Mama. You, le <laughs> you learn how to resolve your marriage problems together. Daddy. You learn how to resolve your marriage problems together. Did y'all know what I meant when I said mama and daddy? Didn't you just read you left them to cleave to your husband? That don't mean you disrespect and dishonor them, but let us run this now. Are you, can somebody say me? But they so quiet up here. I wrote right here. Alicia, I wrote right here. They was going to be quiet. I, I, let's put it right here. I watch this here. So you resolve your marriage problems together. Whenever you have any marriage issues like disagreements about money, like sex, like about life, any, anything in this area, put in the effort to resolve them together. OK, by solving your problems together, you will discover new ways to understand and communicate better with each other. Say that again. By solving your problems together, you would discover new ways to understand and communicate better with each other. Are, are you understanding? Because you have to learn when you become one, you have to learn because uh, uh, you have different communication style. The way you receive when you start to understand the way each other is wired, you can't talk to me like you did Bobby. Oh, my goodness. They just looking at me. Well, I don't know no Bobby. Your ex. Don't come up here. I, I ain't him. I ain't that dude. Well, I used to tell him what to do. Oh, no, 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 no. Bobby ain't nowhere in my DNA. <laughs> I know I put on here. There's going to be highs and lows. So there's a response to people in there <laughs> by this message. No, 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 no. I ain't Bobby. Amen. My name Bennett. <laughs> now, so <laughs> no, that's right. Now, so these are things uh, of what it's going to take now. To become one, you have to learn how to resolve your problems. You have to learn how to make decisions together. You have to learn how to uh, see your uh, marriage as a team of one. My wife and I call uh, our marriage Team Marshall. That's what we call our marriage Team Marshall. That's what we do. We call it Team Marshall. We say together forever, our marriage is tougher than leather. That's what we say. That's our little model of what we say. We Team Marshall. So when we when we have the water boils a little bit. Well, we, we take it off the stove. I mean, you take a break and we come back together. One of us got to remember our team motto. So we got to solve this thing together. We tougher than leather. The only person can rip the leather is us from the inside. Woo! Now, I told y'all things that you need to do to become one. Question is, what make these things so difficult to happen? 
when we we don't we see ourselves as a team, but we don't function as a team. We don't make decisions together. And you always think your decision is the one we got to go with. Mm. We don't resolve our problems together. We choose to not resolve them or get people outside of us involved in them. And they want us to do what they want us to do their way, but not our way. So what makes these things so difficult to happen for us when we know we ought to be resolving them together? We know we ought to be functioning as a team. We know we ought to resolve our marriage issues together, make decisions together. What makes it so difficult to do these things? Becoming one is something that takes effort and persistence. This will not take place instantly, but with wisdom and effort, it can happen for you. It takes effort. You got to be willing to put in the work. If you put in the work, the marriage will work. Now, keep emphasizing marriage. You don't have to be married to understand baggage claim because you could take your baggage in your relationship with Jesus. Ooh, it got quiet up and said, Pastor, I ain't never think about it like that. Yeah, half of the problems you have at home is because your relationship with Jesus ain't where it needs to be because your spouse should be receiving the overflow of your love with the Lord into them. I got to move on now. So I got to be willing to put in the effort that it's going to take. I got to be willing to put in the work. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 5 that a dream comes through much business and pain for effort. I must be willing to put in the work. Now, becoming one, I'm going to give you another definition. It's like a merger. Have you ever heard of a merger? Okay, mergers, two things becoming one. Companies merge all the time, but it's two companies or multiple companies, whatever they want to be merged. But we're talking a relationship now. So we're saying two becoming what? One is the act or process of combining two into one. Two different parts, two different mindsets, two different lifestyles, two different races. It don't matter. And you becoming one. Notice I said two different becoming one, not two the same. I just went over people's head. Two different <laughs> combining as one. It's not a merger if one like me comes with me. Ooh, that just went all down over your head because y'all ain't saying nothing back to me. Now, so that's the merger, right? So that's what's becoming. That's the becoming one. So it is in the becoming one. Watch this now. It is in the becoming one where the issues begin to surface. It is in the becoming one when the issues begin to to surface okay let's talk about the law of possession the law of possession Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24 let's take a look at this Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24 <clears throat> you ready it says this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they be what become one so understand the law of possession is this God designed married couples to be one he designed married couples to be one. So we're talking about the law of possession, though, right? So if he designed married couples to become one, that means you're supposed to be one emotionally. That means you're supposed to be one spiritually. That means you're supposed to be one mentally. That means you're supposed to be one physically. That means you're supposed to be one financially. So although my wife has her account, I'm on it. Okay, 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 but I need to have my own account. You can have your own account, but that don't mean I ain't going to be on there. You just spend out of there what you want to spend out of there. But I'm on there, and the I got to go in there and get some money. Vice versa. I got my own spending account. That's my spending account. Does that mean because I'm this is my spending account, I'm not supposed to have an owner? If she ain't owner, are we one? So I'm on her spending account. She's on my spending account. Now, here's what happens. Here's what happens. it goes back to the first thing I said to y'all is just what people say. Uh, -uh I don't do it like that. Now, you do it how you want to do it. I'm telling you, you ain't the one making the decision. Why are you doing it that way? There is something that got packed in your luggage for you to think the way you think. Oh, this is good. Oh, at least y'all ain't got to shout. It's good to me. It's good to me. Now, are y'all seeing this? So that's what becoming one. That's the law of possession. Now, watch this here. Here's the law of possession. Ready? 
you have to share everything in marriage. That was deep, wasn't it? Let me, let me go there again. Here's the law of possession. You have to share everything in marriage. Anything you don't share can destroy your marriage. Okay. All right. If I, okay, y'all see my phone locked, right? My phone, that's my baby on the front of y'all. Say, hey, girl, how you doing? So, now, my phone is locked. I can call my wife out here right now, and she'll open this thing up. She's supposed to. Why? We share everything in marriage. Unless we're keeping secrets. All right? Now, 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 I said married. Right? Now, watch this. My wife got my uh, access to my bank account. She has access to my uh, 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 email accounts, everything. She has access to it. Why? We want, and vice versa. If I got Instagram, she on Instagram. She the one set up my Instagram. So she see when, when people get on Instagram. <laughs> Y'all follow me? She see when people get on Instagram. Just like I see people on her Instagram. Hey, my name Devin. I love, I love the Lord. I'm thinking like, okay, what, what, what you, you want to follow? That's her page. He want to follow her. For what? That part. Right? And the thing she got on, she say, she says, uh, uh, mother, wifey. Hell, my name, my name. Everybody, all the guys say, yeah, single father of two. Single father. Why you want to follow her for? Go follow her husband. You follow her, want to follow her for? You, you see what I'm getting at? What, what's the point and purpose of that? Now, if her account was open, that's one thing, but what's the point and purpose? And it's a private account. And you see the bio. You see what I'm getting at? So we, 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 keep, we keep things transparent and we share things together because it's a law. What happens if you violate law? Oh. Now, if, if the law of gravity is real, you're going to respect it. Because if you violate the law of gravity, you're going to pay the price for violating this law. Right? I don't care how much you love the Lord. Walk off the bill. Even Jesus said, uh-uh, I ain't jumping off this pinnacle. <laughs> then he said, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, when the devil tried to tempt him and took him up in the high pinnacle and told him, you drop off this mountain, cast his foot against him, the angel's going to lift him up. He said, uh-uh. Bible said, tempt not the Lord your God. Because he respect the law of gravity, but he understand not to tempt God. But you get my point. The law of gravity was in, 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 the play, in, in effect. Now, here's the thing. This is how, what I'm getting at, people. We're talking about his and her luggage. So you're coming in with yours, she coming in with hers. Why is it so difficult for us to do this? Do what? The law of possession. To share everything, to become one in what we do. Why is that so difficult? There's something that's causing this to be difficult to do. And I'm trying to figure out, you're saying, what is this? Why is it so difficult for me to respect what God said, for me to do what he said, when I see it written in his word, but yet I just refuse to do what he said to do? What is it that's causing this to happen? This law of possession not to be fulfilled. What is causing this? What is causing this? Now. Just like in your new life with Christ, when you become saved, the only thing that took place is that you became spiritually alive. Your soulless man was still the same. What's your soulless man, you ask? Your mind, your will, your imagination, your intellect, and your emotion. Okay, that comprises your thinking. It remains the same. That did not change just because you got saved. Hear the preacher. That did not change just because you got saved. That did not change just because you got married. I put right here that they was going to look at me like I was crazy when I said I wrote it right here. Hey, Didi, hey, Myra, Jay. Hey, that's my grandbaby right there. Hey, Myra, look at him. What up, Kareem? Good, bro. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. Now, so let's talk about this now. So when I got saved, only thing that happened to me is I came spiritually alive. My mind was still the same. That's why you can give your life to God, go right outside, cuss somebody out. Because your mind's still the same. And nothing change about your mind. Romans 10 is before Romans 12. Romans chapter 10 tell you how to get saved. Romans chapter 12 tell you about your mind renewal. 
So you got saved, but your mind was still the same. Let's take it to a relationship. You got married, but your mind still is the same. The becoming one is a process. You have to learn how to become that one. You have to be learn how to become that team because a lot of differences have taken place in my life. We have different personalities, different styles, different traditions, different spending habit, habits, different political views, different outlooks on life. I was taught to be independent and not dependent on no man. Where did that foolishness come from? The first thing the Bible said, well, not the first thing, one of the first things God said when he looked at Adam was not as not good that he should be alone. I would look for him or help me. Why is it that when you get your car, you get your house, you get your business established, I don't need nobody. Where that foolishness come from? Well, I mean, what book of the Bible you read that in? So this is what I'm getting at. Somebody has packed that in your baggage and you draw this baggage into your relationship. Somebody put some stuff in here and you brought it into this relationship and that's your thinking. This baggage is your mind and you brought this mind into your relationship. Watch this. You brought it into your relationship with Jesus. You brought it in a relationship with your, watch this here. You brought it with to your spouse and before it may have became your spouse, you brought it to your chick and your dude. Mm-mm, I don't do that. Uh-uh, no, mm-mm. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh, he ain't the one for me. Why? What he did? Mm-mm, he leave the toilet seat up all the time. <laughs> Mm-mm. Child, I got up 3 o'clock in the morning like I normally do, and when the sun was I sat on the rim of the seat. I was so mad at him. Mm-mm. I told him he had to go. You broke up with him because he said, mm-hmm, I can't stand that. <laughs> right. Y'all yeah, saying this, right? <laughs> so why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult to become one? It's because something has been piped into our minds. And you know better, but you don't do better because you're not the one making the decisions. Oh, what do you mean? You think you're the one controlling your decision making, but you're not. Now, I said to you earlier, if you stick with me through this series, I'm going to show you what's making the decisions and how to fix it. How is it that you can come to the Lord and know to do right and know what you're supposed to be doing, but yet there's still something that, yeah, you just, I just, I just ain't going to do that. Okay, so we got to tell you what. Now, watch this. Up. Our thinking is still the same because your mind has not been renewed. You don't have a renewed mind. Now, that's what your relationship with Jesus. Now, I tell you, this is, this is marriage. Renew your mind for marriage, right? But here's the thing. Marriage is a relationship. It could be the same with your relationship with Jesus. It could be the same with your relationship with your children. It could be the same with your relationship with your siblings, right? If your mind is not renewed for, uh, uh, to come out of sibling rivalry, you're going to still be the same way. If your mind is not renewed for your relationship with Jesus, you're going to still be the same way. If your mind is not renewed for your relationship with your spouse, before your spouse, your boyfriend, or, or, or before they become your fiance, if you can't get the mind, that's the time when you should be getting it right. You don't want to wait till you get married. You want to get it right now. Cause, uh, you know, uh -uh. If, you ain't, if we ain't willing to make some adjustments, then how are we going to willing to do when we get married? I be doggone. But see, the thing is, didn't nobody tell you that. <laughs> you thought you could fix them. If you ain't the one making your decisions and he ain't the one making his, how you going to fix him when you can't even make your own right decisions? So we got to see how to do this. This is what this is all about. I'm telling you, when you finish this series, if you stick this series out with me, when you get to the end, you're going to be so happy you stay. You're going to be so happy you finish this series because it's going to be the game changer that you need for your life. Baggage claim. We got to. I ain't going to get in front of myself. I ain't going to do. I ain't going to let y'all pull that out me. Now, here's the thing. So when we got saved, nothing changed about us but the fact that we uh, uh, became spiritual alive. When you came in your relationship, ain't nothing changed with you. But the, when you got married, ain't nothing changed but your last name. You still the same person. Nasty acting when you get mad. Got a nasty demeanor when they get on your nerve. Mm -mm, don't touch me. You know, look. Uh, you, you, you got your ways. Don't, uh-uh, I ain't fixing nothing today, mm-mm. No, baby, mm-mm, mm-mm. You should have been here. 
If I'm not mistaken, Burger King stay open. Oh, 24 hours. <laughs> right. Now, now, you see that? You see that? Now, here's what happens. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. You act in that way because something got in here. And because you now you think you're the one making that decision to act this way. But it's something has gotten in here. Now, what does this represent, y'all? Your mind. Something has gotten in your mind from somewhere to make you think that's okay, and you make these decisions, and you think it's you that's making the decisions. Now, I ain't saying you possessed. Now, you, some of y'all might get that way. <laughs> but I'm not saying that you possessed, but it's something going on that you think you run in your life when you're not. Okay, we're we going to get there. So, that means, watch this here. When we come into relationships, we come in as selfish beings. We're very selfish people. We want what we want or else. That, that's how we are. We selfish. I want mine. I want it this way. We're selfish. All right. Selfishness is one of the major enemies of married life and of love within the family. Selfish. OK. It affects how we talk to each other. How we divide responsibilities? Uh uh, I don't do all that now. Uh uh. Right? In the home, how we resolve conflicts, it's even how we spend our time. It prevents a couple from growing together in marriage. What does? Selfishness. We're supposed to learn how to be selfless, not selfish. Marriage is about servanthood. When we're not willing to serve, we give way for other people to come in. That's willing to serve. That's not supposed to be serving. But when you are selfish, you make it all about you. You don't want to meet nobody's needs when you're selfish. Okay. I was trying to think, don't want to get ahead of myself a little bit. Well, let me just throw this out there. I ain't going to get all of it because it's going to be late in the message. But all right. All right, all right, uh, selfish. This is one of the components of a man. Man, one of the greatest needs of a man is, is, is the first need is respect. Second need, greatest need is sex. Now, if that's his need, it's his need by design. God made him that way. God made him so that he comes back to the woman, and the woman don't want to do it all the time, so when somebody else comes try to do something, she ain't want to do it anyway. She wait for her husband to come back. But the thing about it is, when you're selfish, you make his need on your time. Oh, you don't need that right now. Mm -mm. Maybe it's 2 o'clock in the morning. She's still closed down at 1030. <laughs> it's quiet. I, but at least I promise I'll put it right here. They're going to be quiet on that part, D. I'll put it right here. They're going to be quiet. They shut down. So uh, uh, are, you, are you selfish or are you serving? Now, how do you feel when you go to a restaurant and they shut down on you when it's time for service? That's a good. Thank you, Mama Snell. Huh? That's a good place to put that. Let's look at this. First John 2, 16. We're selfish beings. It says right here, for all that is in the world, this whole world system, the lust of the flesh. Say that's selfish. Y'all say that's selfish. That's selfish. The lust of the eyes. That's selfish. And the pride of life. That's selfish. It is not of the father, but is of the what? World. That's selfish. Look at James chapter 4 and verse 1. Watch what it says. What causes fights and quarrels among you? That's a question mark. Do they come from your desire, the battle within you? In other words, it's saying each spouse on selfish tends, I mean, on selfishness tends to be the biggest problem in marriage. What causes fights and quarrels among you? So between you and yours, what's all, what always causes a quarrel? A quarrel is verbal. You always run in your mind. I always got something to say. That come from with your desires, your own desires that battle within you. So there's something within you that's always causing this mess to happen. Are y'all seeing this? So that's your own selfishness tends to be the biggest problem in marriage. Your own selfishness tends to be the biggest problem in marriage because it's got to be your way. You didn't marry the Burger King, you married me. No Burger King, you can have it your way? No, 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 no. It ain't like that. So God wants us to be in what? Unity. 
Listen to what it says here in Psalms 133. Let's see the divine uh, uh, call for unity. Psalms 33 and verse 133 and verse 1. It says, Behold, and how, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. You see it? Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. All right? Now watch this one right here. Uh, 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 in Genesis chapter 11, verse 6, it's still talking about unity. In Genesis 11 and 6. Watch this. And the Lord God said, Behold, the people are what, church? One. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be withheld from them, which they have what? Imagined to do. And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be withheld from them, which they have what? Imagined to do. Are y'all seeing this? Because why? The people are one. That was unity. So we see here that even these people here that was building the Tower of Babel here in Genesis chapter 11, that was not God orchestrating because if you read before that, it says they were, they were going to build to make their name great. It was not to glorify God. So God said, but look at them. They are operating in this principle. So you can see the principle works. Irregardless of who you are, if you apply the principle, it works. Do you realize that there are some people that don't serve the Lord, that make millions and millions of dollars like the Rockefellers did? They tithe. And here we are that know the Lord struggle. Why does it work? The principle works. So if we learn to do this and walk together and be as one, nothing we imagine to do will be withheld from us. We accomplish everything. Now. The devil doesn't want us together as one. So would you allow me to introduce to you the accuser of the brethren, otherwise known as Diablos. In the ecclesiastical Greek, Satan, the accuser, is known as Diablos. Diablos is an accuser. Okay? Now, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. Let's look at this. Now, we're still talking about his and her luggage. So God wants us to be in unity. God wants us one. But when we came into the church, when we come into relationships, we come in selfishness. How do we get this way? Stuff that was packed into us. Right now, all of a sudden we make these decisions this instantly. It's easy to make a decision. Oh, but you about to make you ever heard people say you better be glad I'm changed because the old me would have went off on you. You ever heard people say that? OK, so something has changed. Because the old way, they used to click. But what made them click? What was it making them click that way? Something was happening that caused them to behave that way. All right. Now, watch this right here. This accuser, Revelation chapter 10, 12 and 10. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now have come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ for the what church accuser of the brethren is cast down who accuses them. Y'all us before our God. How often day and night. Now, what does that mean for me, pastor? OK, he's the accuser of brother. Now, here's what happened. The accuser continues to point out the flaws, magnifies the shortcoming. And he consistently reminds us of what our spouse did to us that we did not like. I thought somebody was going to say, say that again. I missed that one. The accuser continues to point out flaws, magnify shortcomings, and he consistently reminds us of what our spouses did to us that we did not like. Now, since we're talking relationships, you're not a spouse yet. Let's back it up. He consistently reminds us of what our friends did to us. OK, make it look closer. Our girlfriend did to us. Our boyfriend did to us. make it even closer. Our, <coughs> our fiance, a fiance did to us. Oh, you see, he reminds us all the time. Watch this here. See, when you ask God to forgive you, he forgets it. Now, I'm going to show you now. Remember, when you got saved, you became spiritually alive. Oh, Holy Ghost. Should I show them yet? Go ahead, show that there. Go on, show it to them. This actually, we ain't gonna take no offering for this one. Just because God just told me, had he not told me, I'd have said, tell my usher to put the plate back out. Now, watch this right here. Ah, man. Ooh. Ah. Can we get on the screen? Now, this is not, this is not in my notes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Come on in the room. 
Mm-hmm. All right, hold on. Uh huh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. It says, all right, man. Where's it? I see it, but I don't see it. Come on, come on out of there. Uh, who said that? I show that was see that? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I need right there. Everybody in here looking at me like this, real. Oh, what he come on? Oh my God. Oh my, what is he doing when he come on? Man, I gotta go Easter egg hunt. What is he doing? <laughs> and then the Lord spoke to Alicia. See, I'm gonna give her a shout out on the that was Alicia. So the whole world knows you now. Now, uh 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 uh, 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 uh it's, it's it's there I see it uh it's going to have and it's called it's uh, delivered from you know what? I get it now I get it I why I keep my phone right up here y'all ain't saying nothing watch this real quick I watch I get it y'all hold on Facebook don't y'all be looking at me like that uh uh don't y'all judge me all right all right from the kingdom of All right, mm. that's it, that's it, come on. Don't make it a little bad now. All right, yes, you did. That was wrong. That was so wrong with them. I got y'all. I want y'all to see this. I'm going to take a little minute. Hold on. Y'all hold on. Uh-huh. Ah, I put wrong word. Typo. Don't y'all hate auto-type? I guess not. Y'all love auto-type then. All right, boom. Where's that at? Where I see it. Uh huh. Come on, out of there. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. There it is. Boom. I was right, just on the wrong page. All right, there. Boom. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, First Col Colossians, chapter one, and thirteen. Can you get that for me? First Colossians. Chapter 1 and verse 13. <clears throat> Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Now, I'm going to have her put this on the screen so I can show y'all this and then I got to move on. Now, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. This is what's going to help you because I told you about the accuser of brethren, right? And I said, I showed you how about forgetting. I said, when you ask God to forgive you, he forgets. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, God is a spirit. When we got saved, we're supposed to take on God's spirit. But yet, we still act like we're part of the world. Right? Because our mind has not been renewed, so we have not been transformed. It says, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have not been transformed because our mind has not been renewed. We just, we just became spiritually alive. Now, watch what this says. What version is that? King James Version, please. Now, I want y'all to see this. I'm going to show y'all something. That's it? All right, let's read it, church. It said, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. You see that capital H on he? That's not just because it's in the beginning of the sentence. It's because it's talking about Jesus, God has, has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. I got a question for y'all. Can, can I ask y'all a question? Now, if I ask y'all a question, I want y'all to respond to me. Is that okay? Don't be scared. I'll keep the camera on me. All right. Now, where we're in what city right now? Tampa. Okay. We're where? In Tampa. Okay. So let me deal with this young lady right here on the front row. Where are you from? Tampa. Okay. All right. Where are you from? West Palm. Okay. Where are we at right now? Where where? Now where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you at? Where are you from? So how can you be from where you at? Okay, all right, watch this here. Kareem, right? Can you come from the chair and come here? Can you come from the chair and come here? Thank you, that's good, you can go back. Yeah. Now what did he just do? He came from the chair. Now. 
I asked her, I say, where are we at? She said, Tampa, right? Then I said, where are you from? She says, Tampa. If you're in Tampa, how can you be from there? Is it making sense to y'all now? If I'm in Tampa, how can I be from Tampa if I'm in Tampa? So if I ask the question, I say, where are you from? She say, well, I live here in Tampa. So we have in our mind put the word from to be, this is where I live at. But it's, you're not from here if you are there. Now, he's from West Palm because you don't live here, right? I mean, you're not from here. So he's not from here. So he can literally say he's from so-and-so because he's in Tampa. Now, look at the scripture again. He has delivered us the power of darkness. Are you in the power? Are you in the power of darkness anymore? You're from there. So that means you don't have to be controlled by the power of darkness because you're not there anymore. Are y'all seeing this? I'm not there anymore. So I don't have to be controlled by its dictations. I don't have to be controlled by that. I have the choice to choose to do it or not to do it, but understand I'm not there anymore. Here's where I'm at. I'm from there, but here's where I'm at. Where you from? West Palm. You ain't there no more, right? You, you come over to Tampa, so you from darkness, you in Tampa now. So I'm from darkness, and I'm into the kingdom of light now. I don't have to do that. You don't tell me what to do no more. I ain't yours. I'm in love under new management. I'm going to preach that message for y'all coming up. I'm in love on new management. You can't tell me what to do. That's what it used to be. Yeah, you used to like the way I rub your feet. Uh-uh, not no more. I didn't even like rubbing your feet. I did it because I loved you. <laughs> now, so now y'all see this? So you come from there. Now, here's what happens. I told you when you come in a relationship, you come in with baggage, right? What does baggage mean? Your mindset, right? You come into this relationship, even with Christ, even with people, you have this selfish mindset where it's all about you and your way. Now, watch what happens. I told y'all earlier about how you work through things. Now, what happens is that somebody has offended you, your friend, your girlfriend, boyfriend, your fiance, fiance, your husband, your wife. Some of us get offended at Jesus. How do you get offended at Jesus? You know, like her, you tell me, go over there and give her a hug. Man, I ain't gonna hug her. Child, please. Tell somebody something, turn around and hug your neighbor. I looked and I said, baby. <laughs> right? Right, now, now here's what I'm saying. Now watch this here. We'll look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 17. Hebrews 10, 17. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 17. Hebrews 10, 17. Y'all there? It says, and their sins and iniquities will I remember what? No more. You see that? Will I remember what? No more. So if God says he has forgiven you of your sins and somebody trying to remind you of what you did, they are of the spirit of the devil. Because the Lord, ain't, he don't remember. Now, watch this here. But you say, I ain't the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't the Lord. I remember what you did to me. <laughs> I remember what you said. Now, if the Lord forgives, he wants us to forgive too. Because we're supposed to be like him. All right. Go to Mark chapter 11, 25, 26. Watch this right here. Watch what it says. The gospel of Mark chapter 11. <clears throat> it says here, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. That your father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. But Lord, he won't did this. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, who is in heaven, forgive you your trespass. Lord, what that got to do with me? How you don't forgive me? He the one did that to me first. It don't, what, what, did you just not read it? He says he's going to forget, and he ain't going to remember what you did no more. So when people bring up stuff, you ain't got to feel bad about what you did if you ask God to forgive you. Now, I don't mean be no, compa uh, uh, what you call it, uh, compulsive uh, person, right? Uh, you keep doing the same thing, right? 
What I'm saying, not, what's, that's not compulsive. We're looking for a uh, uh, person, uh, habitual, habitual offender. But I'm saying that he will forgive you even if you will keep doing it. He'll forgive you if you mean it in your heart. So then he tells us to do it. But you say, uh, uh, I, but I can't forget like God. Well, look at Philippians chapter three, verse 13. Watch what it says right here. This is what Paul wrote. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended it. But this one thing I do. What's that word, church? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. Now, how can I forget then? What Paul was saying is every time a thought try to remind me of what you did after I forgave you, I pull that thought down because if God forgave me of my sins, I'm going to forgive you. What's forgiveness? I'm not going to put on you the judgment that should have came on you. I'm going to extend some mercy. Although I remember what you did, I'm not going to let it be the forefront of my mind. I pull it down and ask God to give me strength over this thing. Now, husbands, wives, let me help you. If you offended your spouse or if you offended the person in your relationship, here's what you should do if you are the offender. Beat them asking about it. It'll keep them from asking you. Okay, I don't think they got that. Let me, let me show them how this works. Okay, I did something wrong, Alicia. I, 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 I made my wife mad. I burnt her last pot of Vigo yellow rice. <laughs> and she was mad at me, Didi. And she told me to go in there and change it. I said, girl, that rice ain't done. She said, go in there and change it. She said, go in there and change it. I said, it ain't done. I am just know what I'm talking about. And then I ain't read the pack, say 20 to 25 minutes. I waited 45 minutes because I'm playing Brother William and, and PlayStation Madden. <laughs> then I smelled something burn. I said, what that is? I thought it was William's gum he was chewing. <laughs> so I got up and then my wife came, oh, you burned the rice. I say, I didn't know. I told you. So she was mad. Didn't want to say nothing to me. Now, here's what you do. If she was so mad about this rice this three months later because it really hurt her to her heart because I didn't know her mom and her daddy was coming over to eat too. Right? I'm making all this up, by the way. And, uh, and so uh, uh, I have to ask, and this is what you do. You get in front of it. I say to her, even the three months later, because I still say words, and I say, baby, I'm so sorry for burning your rice. I promise you I never, ever not listen to you again as it concerns Vigo yelling rice. Now you know what she's going to do? When you don't do that, here's what the people do that you offended. They always bring it up. But you hurt me. But you burnt my rice up. But you so you go to them and say, baby, I was so wrong the other day when I hung that phone up in your face. I shouldn't have never did that. So I'm going to beat her bringing it up. By letting her know, I'm so sorry that I did that to you. I promise. Now it could be five months later and I bring it back up. Baby, remember that time I hung up in your face? I was just thinking about that. I'll never do that again. I said, okay, baby. <laughs> now, now, why, what's happening? Now, notice, we get tired of them bringing up. You, oh, my God. It's two years later, you still bringing it up? Because it hurt them so bad. Depending on what you did. But you, you beat them to it by bringing it up, letting them know you thinking about the pain you caused them. That was worth the offering, wasn't it? Well, that never mind then. Give me a give word back. Give me a word back. Give me a word back. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's what you got to do. You got to be willing to put that behind you, and that's what they have to learn to do. That's why this message is so important. You got to pull down those thoughts. This is how you do this. You have to pull down the thoughts. When you're the one that's been offended, you're the one that's been hurt, you're the one that's been wrong, you have, when you forgave them, you have to consciously pull those thoughts down. It's going to be a fight and a struggle. You have to pull them down. Why? I'm going to tell y'all why in just a moment. I'm going to tell y'all why. I'm going to introduce y'all to the accuser. Now, I'm going to tell you about him in a second. So pull it down those thoughts. This is what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness doesn't make them right. It just makes you free. Because I'm not going to keep giving you the power every time I think about it. You put me back in that place of disparity, that, that place of hurt and pain. I'm going to forgive you so I can be free of what you did to me. And that's why I'm going to forgive you. Now, I know what you did. Now, I ain't going to be no fool. No, you can't hold my car no more. I ain't going to be no fool, but I forgive you. All right. All right. Unforgiveness is like an invisible umbilical cord. That keeps us connected and emotionally feeding from the negative people and places and experiences of our past. When you don't forgive, you always connected to it. I know a story of a, of, of a young lady. We were grown adults in our late 20s, early 30s. And she saw a girl came to the church 
uh, to visit the church, true story, to visit the church that uh, she didn't like in high school because the girl took her, took her man. And now we're in our 30s, and the girl saw the girl come to church, and now she's supposed to be somebody in church. Uh, uh, treat the girl so nasty? I'm like, whoa, what? You can see the attitude. What's this all about? Oh, she took my man when we was in high school. Baby, that's so far back. But it show you how stuff sit there when you don't deal with it. That's that umbilical cord uh, connection. Now, this is why this happens. Diablos is the what? Accuser of the brethren. He accuses you before the Lord day and night. There's five ways he accuses. He accuses. You ready? He accuses me to God. He accuses God to me. He accuses me to my spouse. He accuses my spouse to me. And he accuses me to myself. Say it again. I got you, Didi. He accuses me to God. In other words, he says, God, look at her. Look at what they're doing. They're supposed to be doing right. But look at them. They're still not doing right. They're still not living right. See, I thought they were serving you. But look at what they're doing. That's accusing me to God. He accuses God to me. See, that if God was on your side, he would have got you that job. If God was on your side, he would have got you that raise. Are you seeing him? He accuses me to my spouse. See that what he did? He doing the same thing. He doing the same. See that? He tried to do that. See that? He brought that same. You heard Pastor say he got that baggage. He didn't want to let that thing go. Yeah, he think I'm her. I ain't Lolita. I wish he would. Right. He accuses my spouse to me. See that? See that? You trying to treat her right. And she thinks you some chump change like you just some little chump off the street. Look how she chumping you and punking you and making you do this. And you mad walking to the store pouting. It's raining. You got to walk all the way to circuit just because she want a candy bar. Who she thinks she is? You've been talking. <laughs> he accuses me to myself. In other words, he said, God ain't forgive you. You have, found, have anybody ever. Repented to God, asked for forgiveness like 20 times for the same thing. God, I'm so sorry. Let me do it. <laughs> forgive me, God. Don't forgive me. Oh, you think about it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. You know the first time he heard you, he forgave you? Anybody ever done that before? But he forgave you the first time. That, now, just, you just read Hebrews 10, 17. He remembers your sin no more. So you can tell when the devil's tormenting you because God already told you if you ask for forgiveness, he already forgave you. The fact that you remember it is the devil reminding you. So that means somebody in a shower with you. You better get out of here. <laughs> Are y'all seeing this? I'm, I'm trying to get y'all to see. That's how he does this thing. Uh, uh, it doesn't make sense to anybody. So now the first chapter was his and her luggage. Chapter two is what's in your bag? What's in your baggage? Chapter three is going to be who packed your baggage. And I'm out of time. We're going to pick this up on next week. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. Yes, 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 yes. So I learned and his and her baggage is that I got to realize that I brought some stuff from somewhere into this relationship it's a bad thing to have your baggage sit by somebody else and something crawl out of it Woo! well that's what happens when you come into a relationship stuff is crawling crawling out your bag not everything in the baggage is bad but there's some stuff that you grew up with that is causing some issues in your relationship that has to be dealt with as i stated earlier you're not the one making the decisions like you think you are so we got to discover what this is, why it is, where it's coming from, so we can get to the root and be in control of our decision making. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. But you got to ride this series with me. Can somebody shout amen? Come on, stand to your feet. Listen, to all my viewing audience online, we thank God for y'all joining us on this beautiful Resurrection Easter Sunday. And we give y'all praise for being with us and everybody in the building. Under the sound of my voice, we thank God for everybody in this building. Now listen, I want to do two things. Number one is I want to... I want to pray for individuals this Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. For you all say, Pastor, there are some things that I recognize just by what you taught this first part that I need resurrected in my life. We're going to broaden it. You say, 
my money may not be where it need to be. I'm believing God for the resurrection power to come through that. I'm believing God for the resurrection power to come in my relationships. I'm believing God for the resurrection power to come in my business. You may be trying to build your business, uh, uh, expand your business, whatever it may be. Uh, that re same resurrection power is available for God to prosper you in anything that you do. The same power that raised up Jesus from the dead is the same power that can raise up things in your life for the better in your life. Now, if that's you, you may be online, you have to put it in the comments, but if that's you and went this building, I want to pray for you. A sign of that is just simply raise your hand right now all over this building and say, yeah, Pastor, I'm not going to tell you, don't tell. I need some things to come through in my life right now. I need this breakthrough in my life. Well, if that's you and your hands are risen up, I'm going to pray for you. Father, we thank you for everybody that hand was raised up. Everybody that may be watching online that's believing for that same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's not limited to just the dead. It's also limited. It's, it also goes to my finances. It also goes to my peace of mind. It also goes to my joy. It also goes to the strength to endure that I need. It also goes to the perseverance that I need. It also goes to my finances and my love life. And Father, we thank you right now for that resurrection power of the Lord being manifested in our minds, in our joy, in our businesses, in our finances, in our love life, in our marriages. Father, we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. In our churches, that resurrection power, that souls are saved, burdens are removed, and yokes are destroyed. We thank you now for that same resurrection power being manifested in our lives in Jesus' name. And every believer shout it. I said every believer shout it. Next appeal I want to give you is for those that say, you know, Pastor, I need to get myself right with the Lord. What better day to do that than today? So I'm going to lead you in the prayer. All you have to do is simply repeat after me. Say, God, I come to you just as I am a sinner. I made mistakes, but I do believe that you sent Jesus and you raised him from the dead just for me. I confess it with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. Send Jesus, let him live in me. Order my mind, order my tongue, order my steps according to your word. I thank you for receiving me into your kingdom. Now I'm going to pray for you. Satan, we bind you. The Lord rebuke you. Take your hands off of their minds, off of their opportunity, off of their future, off of their finances, off of their buildings, off of their life. They're no longer your property. They belong to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you said that prayer, you are as sure for heaven as if you were already there. What? Yep, you didn't got to sell no bean pies. You ain't got to knock on nobody's door. You don't have to hang out no flowers. You ain't got to send out no posters. Listen, it ain't by works, it's by grace that you're saved. Amen? Because if it's by works, people can boast that they've done more than you. No, 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 no. It's by the grace of God that we're saved. Now, that was the first part. Second part is to get yourself in a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so that you can begin to grow and mature in the Word of God. What greater place than Prevail Christian Church? Well, you say, I can't get there. I live out of the city. I live out of the state. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity, Mississippi and Alabama. I saw y'all. I'm going to give you an opportunity to be a part of Prevail Christian Church household by becoming an E-member. How can I become an E-member? Well, simply text the information that is on your screen. Text the word E-member to 94000. That's e member to 94000 and some information will follow and get ready to experience the benefits and privileges of being a part of Prevail Christian Church as an e member online. Now you that are in this building, I'm going to extend the same opportunity to you. If you want to be a part of Prevail Christian Church, I've like I've come this church a church like no other. We've heard the growth of people that took place in 3 to 6 months in churches they've been to for years. I'm going to extend this privilege and opportunity for you to be a part of Prevail Christian Church. Listen, we're not a perfect church, but we're a great church and we have a great word because we serve a great God and there'll be great change in your life through the connection of membership of, with Prevail Christian Church. So if that's you, you want to be a part of what we're doing here and consider yourself a member and a partner with us, raise your hand right now all over this beautiful building. Amen, amen, amen. Would y'all put y'all hands together? Come on, come on, come on. Amen. All right, now we're going to get ready to exit the building, but not from his presence. 
Listen, make sure y'all join us on Wednesday night as we continue with our marriage podcast. We're going to have a great time. And now we're getting ready for our marriage uh, seminar coming up uh, here real soon this month. So God bless you guys. Remember, stay in faith, stay focused, and continue to watch God work. Happy Resurrection Day to you. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. You've just heard a timely word by Pastor Will Marshall at Prevail Christian Church, located at 14627 Nebraska Ave, Tampa, Florida. If your heart has been touched by this life-changing message, why not visit the Marshalls in person this Sunday? Services begin at 1030 a.m. with Wednesday services at 7 p.m. For more information, log on today at prevailcc.org. That's prevailcc.org. And be sure to join us right here next week for another Timely Word.